Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do a little bit of uh, walking today, and we're going to listen, and we're going to start thinking, because there's a lot going on. Gentlemen and ladies, we've come a long way. This is 2024. Ladies and gents, let's see if we can take ourselves home. That is Blackbird, and they're talking about walking in rhythm. And if you don't know the song, of course you can hear the melody and the instruments in the background. You can tell this is from the 70s. And let's just say... They knew what they were doing when they put this song together. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there are quite a few people who communicate with me on a regular basis. And there are some people who take liberties with that communication. And I'm gonna speak on that just a little bit because many of you don't know how irritating that can be and some people are going to get offended because you can't help but offend somebody if you sneeze somebody's going to get offended if you make one step to the right as opposed to the left somebody is going to get offended if you say the as opposed to the somebody's going to get offended if you think the wrong way. Somebody's going to get offended. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in that world right now where people get offended by everything and anything. I don't have time to be walking over eggshells, which is why I'm very grateful that the combination of everything that's happened to me, empathy, sympathy, gone. If you can't tell that, you need to go back and listen to the videos because you see that there is none there. It's just the way things are, not the way I want things to be. It's just the way things is, T-I-Z. Ladies and gentlemen, I have people who are going through their own problems, and they're contacting me, and they're asking me to help them. Now, I want y'all to understand something. Y'all know I don't care about finances, but these people are contacting me, asking me to do things wasting my time for them for free as if i don't have a life to live as if i don't have other things that we're doing for our companies as if i don't have any other clients as if i don't have anything else to do because they're selfish yeah you heard me they're only concerned about themselves they're not worried about whether or not i have the time whether or not i have the energy whether or not i have the ability they're not concerned about me. They're only concerned about <clears throat> themselves, which is the definition of selfishness. And they wonder why I have to keep telling them no. Now, I have been helping some people, but they don't understand. Just because I write something for you, that's what the procedures require. But I can't step into your case and speak for you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, quite honestly, let me explain. Um, many of you guys didn't understand that, so let me let me give you how I worked out representing someone in court, and it was legal. You're, you're, you're I've, I've said it many times. I told you guys. I said, mm, what year was that? Nineteen or two thousand and three, two thousand and four. What I did is I sat up there and I went to court for my best friend. He was my best friend at the time. We haven't spoken since the last time I spoke to him. Probably 2010. I don't care to speak to him again because he didn't care. He only cared about himself and money. 
And that, that's okay because that's people. I've known them since we were teenagers, went to junior high school together. Very good friends. I mean, we, we were very good friends. Knew everything about everything about everything. You know, I, the only thing I didn't know is he was getting he was getting ready to get married. And I didn't find out. I was just as surprised as his parents were. Okay. We all found out around the same time that all of a sudden he was getting ready to get married. And we were like, what the? And we, in our opinion, the young lady was a money grabber because he was a basketball player. He played overseas. He wasn't making a ton of money, but he was making six figures. And... He had an apartment building and I ran the apartment building for him. And we didn't have anything on paper. There was no contract in writing. There was a contract verbally, but nothing in writing. And so I went into court representing him as his manager of his properties, of his business. There's nothing they could do about it because that was my position. And so I could represent, he didn't have to say a word. He was there the whole time. No, well, he did say a word. He did tell him exactly who he was. And then I did all the talking. I handled the entire case. Why? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Howard Hewitt, by the way. Um, if y'all can hear it, I don't know, because I have it turned down on purpose. What happens is... We had success in every case but one, and the reason why that case wasn't successful is because we worked out a settlement with the gentleman and allowed him to stay. He's the only one that we allowed to stay in the building. And that's, to be honest with you, at that time I had sympathy. I literally felt sorry for the man. He was older, and he had been there the longest. In other words, that was his home, and we didn't want to, well, no, excuse me, I didn't want to do that. See, I was under orders to get rid of everybody. And so I had to talk my friend into letting the guy stay. I didn't think that was fair. There was a young lady who had suffered brain damage. Do you know they made me evict her out of her own home? Now, mind you, hold on. She was in a situation where she got hooked up with a man who was taking advantage of her. And they took a loan out on the home. And this man that she was with, that she trusted, got her to sign this agreement with these individuals. And it was a hard money loan. And they foreclosed on her. They did it on purpose. But before they foreclosed on her, they remodeled the home. I was there to help them remodel the home fats domino everybody and he's talking about another mule anyway we did some remodeling of the home spent about sixty thousand dollars into the home now he literally purchased the home for twenty thousand dollars so he made a total of fifty thousand dollars sixty thousand dollars in profits so he spent sixty, eighty thousand dollars to make sixty thousand dollars. So he got his money back and then made an additional sixty thousand dollars on that property in South Central Los Angeles. I didn't appreciate, and that's what turned the relationship sour. He knew the woman had a mental disability, and they targeted her, and I didn't appreciate that. That showed no morals no sense of that that showed nothing so i'm mentioning that to you because i have a lot of people coming at me about their court cases people i don't do court cases anymore i'm handling class actions right now and every turn the courts are holding up paperwork i got colorado holding up paperwork to where I got to still put in the lawsuit against the clerk of the court. Now, right now I'm challenging the court's absolute immunity as being unconstitutional. That's why you guys keep hearing me talk to you about the very fact that 
the Constitution does not give the courts the authority to handle justice, to administer justice. There is nothing in the Constitution granting the courts the right to administer justice. No, it was the establishment of justice. What I didn't show in that video is this. Give me a second, y'all. The See, I just put the Supreme Court in Lady. Now I'm going, I was going to put Lady Justice, but you see it's already here. Now, sorry about Google. Google is stupid. Been dealing with some stupid stuff with Google. We're going to do this one and this one and this one and this one. Come on now, hurry up. I ain't got all day. See what Google does? Is that a bust? Yeah. It's just anticipatory. Just know what they're going to do before they even do it. And that one. Uh-oh, it says I didn't pick all the buses. Now it says buy my buy my buy my buy my buy my my sickles. Let's see, there ain't no bicycles on the lower ones. There's a there's a motor my sickle, but there is no no buy my my sickle, and that's not a buy my my sickle. And watch this. I'm surprised it didn't do it again because that's how stupid it is. Ladies and gentlemen, L T D. And they're going to be talking about holding on. It's very hard to do when love is gone. And that's no lie. Hey, y'all. Y'all just have no idea. Let's do this. The Supreme Court of the United States, they have a figure for justice. Man, I figured justice out a long time ago. Well, let's see how the Supreme Court figures justice. See this hole right here? No, I'm not joking. This is a hoe. She's called Arimathea. She's called the goddess Artemis. Pay attention, goddess of justice and law. She's not just Roman mythology of the Ephesians. She exists all the way back to Babylon. Okay, this is Lady Madonna, people. So when you guys are keep talking about Lady Madonna and talking about who do you think Madonna is supposed to represent? Okay? Please understand. That's why Lady Diana, this Lady Diana is this hole right here. Okay, if you go and you look at pictures of Lady so-called Justice, now this is the Supreme Court of the United States. Okay? This is the Supreme Court of the United States saying that they worship pagan gods. See, Themis, Artemis, Themis, Themis, and Justicia in ancient mythology portraying justice as a female figure dates back to the depictions of Artemis. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Supreme Court building. Pay attention. Now, she doesn't have a sword, but somebody's controlling her. Take a look. Somebody's got her under their control. Symbolism is a whole lot. But remember, she's blindfolded, so she's in the s and It's very hard to do when love is gone. Okay. This is the Supreme Court, ladies and gentlemen. There's her sword and there's her scales. Sword represents war. Don't, uh, it doesn't represent no swift justice. It represents war. And the scales saying that she's supposed to be balanced? No, look at that. The scales are not balanced. Look, one is tilted slightly. Shh, don't tell nobody. Yeah! Yeah! This is... Jeffrey Osborne. Sorry. Y'all know how I feel about my LTDs and my Jeffreys and Osbournes. A lot of respect for Jeff. Okay. Justice without a blindfold appears on one of the courtroom frenzies sculpted by Adolf. Adolf. Okay. 
Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. Why do they have these pagan symbols all over the Supreme Court when they're not supposed to be a respecter of religion? Somebody needs to answer that question. All you got to do is the same thing that I did. The Hold on. Take a look. Supreme Court and the Lady Justice. And go to the very first one, Supreme Court. Hold it on! Ah! I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all just don't know. This is my song. Now, this is, this is the same one. But we're going to go here. See, Michigan has the same Lady Justice. All of the courts have the same Lady Justice. You see her with her scales and her sword? Get rid of this junk. It's after the 25th. Y'all ain't got no more donations going on. You see how they highlight her breast emesis? Okay, hold on. Ancient Egyptian Book of Deeds depict a scene in which a deceased person's heart is weighed against a feather of truth. Where do you think they get the scales from, people? There were some religious things where people would take a person's heart and if certain things did not happen. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Peebo Bryson. This man went through a whole lot. The scales date back to the goddess Met or Meat. Don't know how they pronounce it now. And let's see. I'm looking for the other pictures. I don't care about the blindfolds. These are not all the pictures of justice, but this is the Supreme Court of Brazil, the Palace of Justice in Rome. This is where Lady Justice in Frankfurt, Germany. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, they all see Goddess by Diana Moore. Pay attention. All of the countries. Same junk, no matter where you go. Now, this is showing you how much of a hoe she is, okay? Again, here, these were the older pictures where she was naked. One of them has her with at least 26 breasts because she's the fertility god, or excuse me, goddess. There's no such thing as a female god. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. Females come from scripture. When God created Adam, he said it is not good for man to be alone. And he created woman. Woman did not exist prior to that. Man did not exist prior to that. Pay attention. So how could there be a woman goddess? By the way, one breast two breasts let's uh pull the picture up so you can see it one breast two breasts three breasts four breasts this is the fertility god okay i didn't make that up this is so you guys know the history okay this is so you guys know the history of justice so let's get back to the conversation, if you guys don't mind. Start bringing this to the court's attention. Put it together. Put together your own dossier, so to speak, and say what exactly is going on here. Don't tell me. I, I Don't give me words because I have evidence. Give me evidence that this is not the case. The Greek goddess Dyke. You ever heard somebody call a young lady a dyke? Well, this is what they're referring to her as the dyke depicts whoreism. Okay? A dyke is not no stupid aqueduct. Pay attention. So, Hellenistic deities such as Ardemus, and then you have dyke, the goddess were later goddesses of justice. No, they were always goddesses of justice. So when you understand 
the secrets of the court and how the court was formed, then you'll end up being done like me. They'll block you from even coming into their courtroom because they don't want you putting this on the record. They don't want the public to be aware of this. Now, of course, this is Wikipedia, but do your research. Don't do my research. Do your research. She's called Lady Justice for a reason, but she's no lady. Okay? You know, people, you're right. It is impossible. It's impossible for us to live in a country that claims that it does now remember if you have the right to freedom of choice when it comes to religion and choosing your religion and the exercise of your religion and the practice of your religion well doesn't the supreme court and congress and the president have their right to the same thing you guys hear about the rituals that these congressional members practice come on now this ain't got nothing to do with no Illuminati and no Freemasonry. The only reason why you know about the Illuminati and Freemasonry is because they allow you to know. They allow you to know. But hold on, ladies and gentlemen, this is the court of New York. I, I don't think I've seen this one before. Hold on, I'm clicking on this one because I'm interested in the court of New York. Since the dawn of civilization, justice has been conceptualized as a divinity linked to the cosmic order but it is from the greek and roman goddess of justice that today's iconic symbols derive greek mythology the goddess of justice was artemis or themis or themis and her daughter's name was dicky or dyke also known as asteria Ladies and gentlemen, they're letting you know right now what their symbols mean, that they are religious symbols depicted from pagan religion. How in the world? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to let y'all know how much this song means to me. When this song first came out, I just, it just, the way the song was done, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is Lady Soul by The Temptations. And if you go back and you listen to The Temptations, this doesn't fit The Temptations. This fits something like the Isley Brothers. You know what I mean? This is almost close to the fall tops, something that they would do. The Spinners, I could see them doing something similar to this, but not The Temptations, not The more money people okay not the money people it just but it's a perfect song to me done very well because you are what just very good song all right let's get back to this ladies and gentlemen <sighs> Every single court in the world, one breast assist, two breast assist, three breast assist. Y'all need to understand who she is. She is a hoe. Lady Justice is a hoe. And I let them know that. This is letting you know exactly who she is. They want you to think that their justice is honorable. They want you to think that their justice it's respectable. Their justice is not respectable. Their justice is based on pagan beliefs, ancient pagan beliefs. But then they want to talk about everybody else and their beliefs as if there's something wrong with everybody else and their beliefs. So there you go. They talk about history. Now, here, I want you all to understand something. Give me one second. No, as a matter of fact, forget that. I know what I do. We go up here to the top. Cause you are my, 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 
my lady soul. You you are my what? When what? How come you are going cold? All right. These are the different pictures of this creature. And I call her a creature, you see? Black woman on the Supreme Court, justice, blah, blah, blah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I just need you all to understand where you're at. You think these are courts. These are not courts. When they talk about let justice be done, they're not talking about right and wrong. Wait, hold on one second. Oh, yeah. Just had to hear that, y'all. That's the temptations, all right? And they're singing Lady Soul. Ladies and gentlemen, I do need you all to pay attention to what's going on here. These are all the symbols throughout the world. This is not just here in the United States. All the Supreme Courts, they represent this whole. Now, I don't understand this image, but she's got a man that she's holding on to. Interesting, ain't it? Oh, by the way, and she has a crown. Shows that she rules over something. There you go. This is Lady Justice. Oh, by the way, what I'm trying to show you is this is not a secret anymore. This is not a secret anymore. You'll see that there's all kind of religion being practiced by the courts. I told you the Federal District Court in Puerto Rico has an obulus. The male penis. That's what totem poles were. Oh, you didn't know? Ladies and gentlemen, they put totem poles in cartoons. Making you think that there was something mystical about a totem pole. There's nothing mystical about a totem pole. A totem pole is nothing but a, an image of a male penis. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Boney James. Stop, look, and listen to your heart. Okay. Let's... I'm looking for something in particular. Ah. Uh, Look at the little cupids. And look at the pitchforks, people. There's the halo and the pitchfork. Ah. So now you guys understand things a little bit better. It's all a joke. Now, Sandra Day. These images are put before us as honorable. Ladies and gentlemen, I like Sandra Day O'Connor. I like some of her thinking. But remember, she was still part of the same court that has held people bound by stupidity. The Supreme Court has a duty to speak up. Now, I, I will give this court some credit. They have been speaking up. They'll tell you that they can't speak up unless it's brought before them. And technically, they're correct. They need a controversy. But look at how many times they speak up before they have the controversy. Now, you'll talk about Roe v. Wade, that how they waited to overturn Roe v. Wade. Yes, because Roe v. Wade was against the law to begin with. They should never have did Roe v. Wade the way they did. It has nothing to do with choice. It has everything to do with authority to act. And because everybody so much wants them to rule on this and rule on that and make law, then you lose rights when you give them power that they didn't have originally because now they will abuse that power. And that's exactly what they've done. This is, this is the world we live in. All right. So those of you. There was, we're going to give you this information, and I'm going to tell you, those of you who waited until this point, I'm going to tell you what we're getting ready to try to do, because most people don't understand when we try to go and create programs 
there are certain principles of law that doesn't allow us to go all the way with you. See, we cannot take you from the water to the promised land. We can only take you from the water to the desert and you have to cross the desert to get to the oasis. That's your job. You have to go through the hard stuff. We cannot do the hard stuff for you. That's why I say you cannot pay us enough. Why? Because the moment we start doing that, they start going after us. They start going after the members of the team. And they are headhunters when they do that. Okay? Just so that you know. There are a couple of things that have just happened recently that is uh, quite interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, this is in vogue, and they're singing Yesterday. And you know, I've never heard this song. Never, never heard the song. My first time listening to in vogue singing the Beatles, John Lennon's and yesterday okay what we're getting ready to do ladies and gentlemen is we're getting ready to our debt acknowledgement program we have a document that we have to send out on your behalf you're going to receive a limited power of attorney you know i went i was just telling somebody this today there was a, a website that i went to and in order for you to receive the services of this website, you had to, it was your choice, sign a limited power of attorney. And I've been telling people, that's the first, I don't remember what website it was, by the way, but I was telling people that's the first time I've seen somebody tell someone about a limited power of attorney. Ladies and gentlemen, a limited power of attorney means that you're not giving away your full power. So we've had people object to our power of attorney as if we were taking power away from them and they don't understand that we need the power of attorney in order for us to communicate with other companies on your behalf. Because that's the first thing they're going to ask us for and that's the first thing the law requires that we do. So guess what we did? We had to tell some people if you're not going to accept the contract then we're not going any further. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to offer the same opportunity to everybody else. If they want our help, this is their choice, not ours. You sign up for one of our programs. There is going to be, in most cases, a limited power of attorney. Because we have staff that work on your paperwork. Now, please understand, we're getting ready to put together the paperwork i'm i'm gonna hold off on the next song for just a second we're getting ready to do the paperwork so that individuals can challenge certain things with certain agencies now we believe the one we're doing now it's already done we just need to get the power of attorney taken care of with the dap people this is for daps and the amerilegions and the uh, AMCFs, your paperwork has already been done and processed and already been sent to the appropriate agencies. See, we haven't stopped. We have to create a record. Now, you guys have heard that before. When you go to court, I tell you, in that situation with the gentleman who I went to court with, who I represented in court, well, what I did before we went to court was I documented everything. I created a record. Because the courts are supposed to be courts of record, but they have no record to be courts of. You have to create the record. Sorry. I'm sorry that I never told you all that before. I'm sorry that y'all didn't know. Ladies and gentlemen, the court doesn't create the record. You establish the record by putting your evidence together. You place the evidence on the record. You itemize the evidence. You introduce the evidence in outline format. Organize succinct. You place the record on the record. You guys don't understand, and I'm sorry. The court 
has no duty to act unless you place evidence on the record. So place your exhibits on the record and you admit it into record. When you go into court, I'd like to admit the following record, or I'd like to admit the following evidence into record. You've heard attorneys say it all the time. You don't have to sound like an attorney. Put your record together and introduce it to the court. Those of you who have been told about small claims court, you don't need us for small claims court. The only thing you need to do is take the bank, whoever the creditor is, take them to court. Bring in your copy of the Federal Reserve Act, not the Title 12, Section 411, 412, and 414. Go and get the original statute at large of the Federal Reserve Act. Put that on the record. Say, according to this, and then you're going to need the 59 Stat 237, Subsection 2, where it takes the section of the Federal Reserve Act, Section 16, Paragraphs 2 and 4, and it amends it. But you're going to highlight, it says right here that my promissory note was collateral and security. You don't have to say nothing else. You don't have to prove that the Federal Reserve Operating Circular was associated with it. The moment they open their mouths, wait, are you telling me that this matter had nothing to do with the Federal Reserve Act? Just, that's your question. Are you telling me that this matter has nothing to do with the Federal Reserve Act? Well, then, if you're not telling me that, then that means that certain things had to be followed, and they were not. Certain procedures had to be followed, and they were not. Now, you really must understand, with the Federal Reserve Act, certain procedures have to be followed. They don't get to create the procedures and then ignore the procedures. So this says my property was collateral and security, but notice section four of section 16, paragraph four of section 16, it says that the Federal Reserve gave them the money. Now, section two says the money has already been issued. It actually speaks to it as if it's a done deal. It says the Federal Reserve notes issued. Well, that's past tense, not present tense. It doesn't say to be issued. It says Federal Reserve notes issued. So they are aware, and the law is aware, that they're supposed to receive the Federal Reserve notes from the Federal Reserve Bank, not from me. So I need their records because I don't believe them. And I have a right to this accounting since they are claiming that they did not receive these monies from the Federal Reserve. By saying that there's an outstanding debt, they're making a claim that they did not receive the monies from the Federal Reserve. So now you have to get their attention. You can do that on your own. You don't need us. We're bringing up uh, several other issues, but you can do that part on your own. You don't need us. Now let me, let me go ahead and finish. Ladies and gentlemen, somebody contacted us today, said that their driver's license was suspended, and they're needing to know, did we have this and did we have that? We never promised anybody to work on suspended driver's licenses. However, pay attention. The suspended driver's license works as a lien. How do you get a lien removed? You show proof that it's been paid. That's how you get a lien removed. You don't have to go to the people and ask them to remove the lien. You have to show proof that it's been paid. What you guys don't understand is you have to challenge the law suspending your license. But many of you guys, you're, you're too stubborn. You don't return the license. You're supposed to, when you get notification that they're going to suspend your license, you go and you return that piece of junk. Now, if your job, pay attention where you work requires you to drive for the company, then you need your license because you're doing it for commercial purposes. So you are gonna have to follow their policies and procedures. Gotta say that because some people don't understand the whole purpose of a license. Look, I've already done too many videos showing you guys that the police monitor traffic. That's their job. That's why the Supreme Court ruled in Gonzalez 
that Miss Gonzalez, hold on. Wake up. Gonzalez versus Castle Rock. Police Department. Supreme Court decision that Gonzalez failed to prove that the police had an obligatory duty to protect her interests. Stop listening. This was her three daughters, ladies and gentlemen. Her three daughters that her husband killed. Give me a second. We're going to, these are images. I don't want the images. I want, is a United States Supreme Court case in which the court ruled in a 7 to 2 that a town and its police department could not be sued under 42 USC 1983 for failing to enforce a restraining order, which had led to the murder of the woman's three children by her estranged husband. Ladies and gentlemen, let me make sure y'all pay attention. Don't sue them under no stupid code. This is the Civil Rights Act of 1866. It applies to others other than so-called people of color, even though it was written primarily for people of color. It was the first Civil Rights Act. That's why they call it the first Civil Rights Act of 1866. Go and read it. But this is the Gonzalez case, Gonzalez versus Castle Rock. And in this case, Supreme Court said that she needed to prove, now pay attention, pay attention to what they did. A town and its police department, town and cities, same thing, and its police department. Okay. The thing about it is this is this is where we're gonna go because it's that protected property interest. She had an order from a court, a restraining order. And police enforce restraining orders all the time. Tell me I'm wrong. No, go ahead. Police enforce restraining orders all the time. All her husband, not her husband, all her attorney had to do, because they went on appeal on a certiorari, and this was probably the police department, but it's the town of Castle Rock, but it was the police department because the woman paid taxes. That's all she had to say. I pay taxes. That's the nexus. She paid taxes. You ever heard of defund the police? That's all her attorney had to say was because she is a taxpayer for the town of Castle Rock. The police, by all means, being employed by the town of Castle Rock, owed a duty to her because the courts of the town of Castle Rock controlled that area. That was the local government. Respondents do not, for due process clause purposes, pay attention, for due process clause purposes, have a property interest in police enforcement of the restraining order against her husband. They said she didn't have a property interest. Of course she did. She pays property taxes. Due process clause procedural component does not protect everything that might be described as a government benefit. To have a property interest and a benefit, a person must have a legitimate claim of entitlement to it. Pay attention. She paid taxes. That's her claim. Such entitlements are created by existing rules and understanding stemming from an independent source such as state law. She pays taxes. And part of the benefit of the taxes is police protection. Shh, don't tell nobody. That's why I made the comment about Sandra Day O'Connor being part of the court that did things like this. Gonzalez just lost all three of her children and these idiots put her through that much more pain. This was the Supreme Court people that made this decision. Oh, this was, I believe, 2000 and, oh, I, you know, I didn't even know it was 2005. I was going to say 2012. And Justice Scalia, okay, sitting up here, 
I don't understand, Stevens. I give you a little bit of credit with your descent. You know what? Let's see Stevens' descent. I, I'm, I'm interested to see what Stevens had to say. What you mean it's not found? You go. How do you go have a link that's not found, uh, Cornell? Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. They probably knew I was going to ask that question. Hold on one second. Be right back. Okay, here's Stevens' descent, or decent. <laughs> He's a decent sort of person. Anyway, the issue presented to us is much narrower than is suggested by far-ranging arguments of the parties and their amici, amicus briefs. Neither the tragic facts of the case nor the importance of according proper defense to law enforcement professionals should divert our attention from that issue. That issue is whether or not a restraining order entered by the Colorado trial court on June 4th, 1999 created a property interest that is protected by the arbitrary deprivation of the due process clause of the 14th amendment. It is perfectly clear on the one hand that neither the federal constitution itself or any federal statute granted the respondents or her children any individual entitlement to police, police protection. Nor, I assume, does any Colorado statute create such an entitlement to the ordinary citizen. Uh-uh, she pays taxes. That's what gives her the entitlement, because she receives the benefit of those taxes that she paid, which goes to funding the police department. On the other hand, it is equally clear that the federal law imposes no impediment on the creation of such an entitlement by Colorado law. The respondents certainly could have entered into a contract with a private security firm obligating the firm to provide protection to respondents' families. And they did. It's called taxes. The respondent's interest in such a contract would unquestionably constitute property within the meaning of the due process clause. Ta-da! If the Colorado statute enacted for her benefit or valid order entered by a Colorado judge created a functional equivalent of such a private contract, you know what, Stevens? I give you some credit. You know what Stevens just said, ladies and gentlemen? He said the restraining order from the court created the private contract, granting the respondent an entitlement to mandatory individual protection by local police force, that stated contractual right or created right would also qualify as property entitled to constitutional protection. Thank you, Judge Stevens. I give you your credit for that because that is 100% right. Ladies and gentlemen, if you pay attention, he says that the order from the court, just as what I said, says she had a court order. What's the court worked for the town? It's part of the government. That's her entitlement. That's the nexus. So as you see, apparently, I do know what I'm talking about. I do not understand the majority to rule out the foregoing proposition, although it does express doubts. It, this is what the court said, and he's highlighting the fact that they've already said it. It is by no means clear that an individual entitlement to enforcement of a restraining order could constitute a prop, uh, property interest. See, it is not clear that it could constitute a property interest. Moreover, the majority does not contest that issue right there. That if the respondents did have a cognizable property interest in this case, the deprivation of that interest violated due process. Gonzalez, I've been saying this. If somebody knows who she is, I know she probably doesn't want to go through the stress again. But if somebody wanted to go back and get this matter brought back before the court on that issue right there or in any other subsequent case, document the fact because you would be contradicting all of this junk here. As the court noted, respondents has alleged that she presented the police with a copy of the restraining order issued by the Colorado court and requested that it be enforced. In response, she contends the officers in effect, uh, effectively ignored her. The, if these allegations are true, a federal statute, and he produces the 1983, but he produces the uh, revised stat, 1979, provides her with a remedy against the petitioners, even if Colorado law does not. Ta-da! The central question in this case, therefore, is whether or not the Colorado law of the respondents 
had a right to police assistance comparable to the right she has who uh, to the right she would have possessed to any other service that government or a private firm might have undertaken to provide the government she pays taxes property interests of course are not created by the Constitution rather they are created and their dimensions are defined in existing rules and understandings that stem from an independent source such as a state law she pays property taxes rules and understandings of the source are to secure certain benefits and that support the claims of entitlement to those benefits. Thank you, Judge Stevens. How could they have gotten that wrong? That's the Supreme Court. That's 2005. That was under William Rehnquist. Same justice that are there today. This was a 7-2 decision. Okay? That means seven of those judges decided to say something as stupid as what they did. That... The police didn't have a duty. Ladies and gentlemen, the police always have a duty. That's why they're called the police. But what you guys, as I did in the video yesterday, pointed out that the police only do one job. They're there to protect business. Okay? Y'all need to understand that. They are there to protect business. Common sense that all police officers must use some discretion in deciding when and where to enforce city ordinances. Common sense says the police have to determine when and where. The mandatory language of the ordinance afforded the police no discretion. It is the court's um, proclaimed simple common sense that the police have some discretion. Uh-uh. The police don't have any discretion. The deeply rooted nature of law enforcement discretion even in its presence, is stemming from mandatory legislative command, as illustrated in Kala, Kala, uh, Chicago excuse me, versus Morales, I'll say in Calales, anyway, which involved the ordinance that said a police officer shall order persons to disperse in certain circumstances. Yeah, okay, I get them. That, not every circumstance because they can't order them to do it in every certain circumstance because why the right to peacefully assemble is the right to peacefully assemble they can't get around that okay a peace officer shall arrest if the arrest would be impractical under the circumstances seek a warrant for the arrest of a restrained person when a peace officer has been informed uh, has information amounting probable cause See, there is no such law that can create that. Police officers don't get to determine probable cause. See, when a police officer has information amounting to probable cause, that means the police officer is determining probable cause. The police officer doesn't get to determine probable cause. Nobody's ever challenged that joke. Probable cause can only be determined by a court, and the courts have repeatedly said that. Police officers do not get to determine probable cause. Matter of fact, that's the last thing we're going to talk about, then I'm going to get on out of here. Wake up. Wake up. According to the Fourth Amendment, everyone has the right to be secure in their properties, comma, possessions, comma, papers, comma, effects, comma, and no warrant shall issue without probable cause. Period. Can you provide numeral four case citations documenting this fact? Question mark. Stop listening. Stop listening. All right, this is for our Fourth Amendment secure in one's property. Okay? The Fourth Amendment guarantees the right to be secure. I didn't ask for that. Warrants and probable cause. While warrants are generally required for searches, there are exceptions to plain, there are no such thing as plain view. Exigent circumstances or consent. That's a lie. And these cases right here are all illegal. 
Probable cause means reasonable belief that a crime has been... Nope. That's not what probable cause means. Now watch this. Since yeah, he went there, he, he did that. He wants to do the the case thing for the police, uh, where the courts have ruled that the police get to determine probable cause, but at the same time, they said quite different. Protection against unreasonable search and seizures. Language, these cases clarify uh, immediate areas surrounding the home. Employees of Fourth Amendment protection as the home itself established. Okay. Now watch this. It, he answered the question correctly the second time. Wake up. According to the law, comma, only a judge may determine probable cause. Comma, can you provide three case citations supporting this conclusion? Question mark. Stop listening. Now, you see how, give me a second. Wake up. Wake up. I do not want your opinion, comma, I don't want your explanation. Comma, I just need the case citations where the courts have stated that only a judge may make a determination of probable cause. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. Okay. While the ultimate authority to issue a warrant and determine probable cause rests with a neutral and detached magistrate, typically a judge, the process leading to determination involves more than just a singular judge. Hold on. Wake up. Wake up. That is not what I asked you, is it? Comma, I asked you for cases whereby the courts have determined, comma, that only a judge can make a determination of probable cause, exclamation mark. Do not provide anything else other than what I've asked you for, exclamation mark. Now give me the three cases I asked for. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, there are cases where they say, and now he's talking about he can't find the cases, the fact that the law says that only a judge can make determinations of probable cause. See, he says he couldn't find it there. You should have simply, I should have simply provided cases directly related to your issues about judge solely determining probable cause. This case emphasized the issues that judge must judge for himself the persuasiveness of the facts relied upon in the complaint to show probable cause. To underscore the judge's independent responsibility for assessing the evidence anyway, this case, the Supreme Court ruled that information gathered through an illegal search could not be used to establish probable cause for a subsequent arrest warrant and search. This reinforces this Texas case two-pronged test um evaluating the validity of the affidavit used to obtain the warrant and blah 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 ladies and gentlemen police officers do not get to determine probable cause there is no such thing in the constitution of reasonable suspicion so watch this wake up wake up where is the open quote reasonable suspicion close quote clause of the Constitution, comma, allowing an officer to determine probable cause, question mark. Stop listening. While not explicitly outlined in the Constitution, we're going to find that he's going to say, well, not explicitly. 
the Constitution does not contain a specific reasonable suspicion clause. Instead, the concept of reasonable concept, conception of reasonable suspicion arises from judicial interpretation of the Fourth, <laughs> the fourth Amendment protection against unreasonable suspicion. This means that while the Fourth Amendment does not explicitly, see, while not explicitly mentioning reasonable suspicion, the Supreme Court has developed a legal legal precedents allowing this concept over time. Really? Ah, huh? Such as the Terry case, dealing with Terry stops. How they can briefly detain a person and question the individual if they have reasonable suspicion of criminal activity based on actual articulable facts, not just a hunch. This case further clarified the meaning of reasonable suspicion, emphasizing that there must be based on specific objective facts that would lead a reasonable person to suspect criminal activity. Ladies and gentlemen, when a police make Terry stops, you don't have to answer a single question. Simply, I do not wish to participate in your investigation. A gentleman just sent me a, a video of him recording a police stop where the officer asked him to roll his window down. And he already had the window down, literally. Uh, and there was at least eight inches. The window was literally eight inches open. I mean, you could literally see a big, huge gap. Sky and everything. But the officer says, no, I need you to roll it down further. And the guy says, uh, he rolled it down. He says, I don't have to roll my window down. There is no, you know, that, that conversation. The officer asked him for his license and registration. And he asked the officer, excuse me, you have your emergency lights on. What's the emergency officer? I'm pulling you over. It's a traffic stop. Sir, that's not what I asked you. I said, what's the emergency? Are you articulating that as an emergency? Sir, license and registration, please. Do you have a business card? Sir, I asked you for your license and registration, and I asked you. Okay, tell you what. I can't deal with you. Uh, give me your supervisor. What do you need my supervisor for? I'm asking you for your license, and I asked you for your supervisor because I cannot deal with you. Sir, uh, do you have a business card? I work for the S S police department. He says, that's not what I asked you. Are you telling me that you have not taken an oath to uphold the Constitution? Sir, your license and registration? He kept saying that to him. Do you understand? The questions he was asking were reasonable. The officer did not articulate a crime. He did not articulate an emergency. He did not say that he was investigating a crime because he had observed some criminal activity. He just said he was pulling him over. For what? A traffic infraction is not a crime, people. <sighs> Sorry. I don't want you guys arguing with them. You must understand this when I say it again. A traffic infraction is not a crime. Let's do it here. Wake up. A traffic infraction is not a crime. Now, stop listening. Stop listening. I ain't got time for that type of stupidity. I want you guys to pay attention to something. This is Terry. It's a landmark case, a precedent setting case. It's called Terry Stop Doctrine. Allowing the police to briefly detain and question individuals if they have reasonable suspicion of criminal activity. Pay attention, criminal activity. Hold on. This case further clarifies the meaning of reasonable suspicion, emphasizing that it must be based on specific objective facts that would lead a reasonable person to suspect criminal activity. Pay attention. Basic traffic infractions, sometimes called civil infractions, are low-level violations 
that are usually not classified as crimes. They are basic omissions that are illegal but are not treated as criminal activity. <clears throat> what, you guys never, you've never heard of anybody, pay attention, you've never heard of anyone, anyone, any, 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 any anyone, what is everybody contacting me for? Okay, you've never heard of anyone bringing this to your attention before? Pay attention, traffic infractions. This is main legislation. A traffic infraction is not a crime. So pull it up in your state, people. Hold on. C A P E N A L C O D E. Now, aren't you glad you waited until this time? Pay attention. Unlike misdemeanors and felonies, which are crimes, Infractions are not considered to be a crime. If you get charged with an infraction, you can be fined up to $250, but as long as you pay the fine, you cannot be sent to jail. I'm not worried about that. I put that in here because I am looking for the very fact, Penal Code Section 17D, misdemeanors and infraction. An infraction is a crime that can only be punished by a fine. Nope, an infraction is not a crime. An infraction is exactly that. An infraction is a minor offense. Pay attention. This is the Supreme Court of California. Most infractions are written on a ticket form. Ours, yeah. But infractions can also be filed by the prosecutor on a complaint document. Ladies and gentlemen, infractions are not crimes. They cannot make an infraction a crime. Okay. Crimes are defined specifically. Infractions are not crimes. A traffic infraction is not a crime. Now, hold on. If you endanger someone else's life, that is a crime. You are not allowed to endanger another person's life. So if you are speeding, doing 107 miles an hour in a 80 mile an hour zone, then you are endangering your life and others. Now, are you allowed to endanger your life? No, because... The Constitution does not, um, what you call it, condone endangering anyone's life, including suicide. What do you mean the Constitution doesn't condone suicide? Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have a right to commit suicide in the Constitution. Everyone has the right to life. No one shall be deprived of the right to life. So you can't take your own life. There's no law allowing you to take your own life. Go back and read it. Everyone has the right to life. No one shall be deprived of life without due process of law. Why do you think euthanasia was such a big deal? They needed to have a due process mechanism in order for them to do euthanasia, but euthanasia is still murder because they're taking someone's life. It's the way the document is written. It has nothing to do with what you think or how you feel. Constitution is not based on feelings. Let me see. Traffic ticket is not a criminal offense unless it leads to injuries, property damage, or involves... She says traffic violation. See, <laughs> a traffic violation is not a crime. Okay, but you would have to endanger somebody's life or damage someone's property. Okay, although failure to appear in court for a traffic violation is not covered under California Penal Code, it is still a crime. Failure to appear is because you were ordered to appear. When they give you the ticket, that's an order to appear. So that's why it's considered a quote-unquote crime. Okay, a fistic ticket is not a crime. So again, when a young man asks the officer, why did you pull me over? Why are your, why did you turn on your emergency lights? Is there an emergency? Because they need to have an articulable, pay attention, articulable facts that lets them know that somebody is guilty of criminal activity. So let's find out what the definition of this is. Now, I got to go, ladies and gentlemen, because I got a meeting. Let's do this for you. And we're going to do definition. 
course, general term, criminal activity refers to actions or conducts that violate the law and are considered to be harmful, threatening, or disruptive to individuals or society as a whole. Now, your conduct has to be disruptive. Traveling on the highway cannot be disruptive as long as you're staying within the rules. Now, hold on. Well, the rule is you must be registered. No, that's not a rule. That's a requirement only for commercial vehicles. Well, the rule is you must have a license plate. No, that's not a rule. That rule is only for commercial activity. This has to be, it has to be classified as criminal activity. Okay. The term hate crime, nobody cares about. I didn't say nothing about no hate crime. I said criminal activity is the kind of criminal involvement in the commission of the following serious crimes. Serious crimes. Okay. That's the law insider. Criminal activities definition means any crime in which there is a plea of guilty, a verdict of guilty, or special verdict upon which the government convicted, blah, 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 blah. Ladies and gentlemen, injury to another party, injury to property, or even injury to self. See, behavior or any act or activity or event that is punishable by law, not punishable by statute, not punishable by code, not punishable by ordinance. But these are things you have to know before you get into that situation. I got to go. Hey, y'all take care. We'll talk again. As long as this, nah, but we'll talk again. Have a good day.